Uh, today I'd just like to uh, work on our curb lines. Um, we've already drawn lines that pass through all of our back of curb shots. Um, as you can see now, before we get started, make sure that you join. Remember there's a, a, a way to join these uh, feature lines. So you want to make sure that these lines are continuous. So you can see here I'm hovering over these lines and uh, you can quite clearly see that I've taken the time to join all those lines so they go all the way around. It's not a couple of segments. Remember that if you need to do join some lines, you can simply left click on your feature line. Notice that all these tools up here changed and the one for joining uh, feature lines um, is this one right here, join and that allows you to to join those lines okay now once we've done that I don't know I hope we didn't do this before but what we will, what we want to do is we want to left click on these feature lines like this and use this smooth option right here so go ahead and go around and to each one uh, perform this smooth command now having done all that uh, you should notice that it's no longer a series of line segments it's now a nice smooth curve uh, that still passes through all the points. Now one of the things you have to worry about with some of these smoothing options is they'll create a smooth curve but it no longer passes through the point as this does. Um, so they have to pass through the point because we know that where the shot was taken that's where the back of curb is. I noticed a little flat spot here in our tire um, and that's because we didn't take enough points, but we don't have the luxury of going out there and cleaning that up. So we aren't, we're not going to worry about it. But let's just, now once we've gone around and we've smoothed all these curves, I'm just going to show you with this one to start off how to create what are called stepped offsets uh, to show that curb properly. Um, let me just try and draw something here, uh, and it's going to be a typical... Uh, cross-section for a curb. If we think about that vertical face curb, it looks uh, something like this. And I'll just talk in a second here about the dimensions. So this is supposed to just represent a concrete curb cross-section okay um, the top of the curb from the back of the curb to the face of the curb is usually specified in inches now we're gonna have to convert inches to decimal feet in a minute but let's just for a moment let's just talk in inches uh, from the back of curb to the face of curb is six inches and I haven't drawn this perfectly but it, the face of the curb from the top of the curb to the flange to the flow line is also six inches so I'll try and show that here and then the distance from the flow line of the curb to the flange line um, would be usually it's typically two feet um, so we're gonna just assume that this is two feet and then uh, the last thing I wanted to think about was what's the elevation change from the flow line. Let's see here. I'm, I'm, this is really bad, but uh, the elevation change from the flow line to the flange line is uh, typically one and one half inches. Okay, so you may need to come back to this and look at this again, but that's an inch and a half. Now normally as surveyors we don't talk in inches so if I had to convert these which we will have to do in a minute six inches is 0.5 feet two feet is just two feet an inch and a half we're just going to call that 12 one hundredths of a foot so you would take 1.5 divided by um, 1.5 inches um, divided by 12 inches per foot I think is going to give you um, it turns out it's about 12 hundredths of a foot. It's not exact, but that's close enough. So 
Um, we're going to need, need to think about that because here's where our shots were taken. They were taken right at the top of the curb at the back. So when we create these stepped offsets, we're going to create one for the flange line. I'm sorry, the flow line, which is right here. And we'll also create one for the flange line. So we're going to take this uh, set this line that passes through here, remember here's our curb sort of like this, and we're going to offset it half a foot and drop it down half a foot. That's going to give us our flow line, and then we'll do the same thing again. We'll offset the back of curb line, only now our offset is going to be two and a half feet, two feet for the pan of the curb and six inches for the top, so that's 2.5, and then we're coming down uh, half a foot, but then we're going back up 12 hundredths. So that'll be a, a vertical drop of um, minus 50 plus 12 is minus 38 hundredths of a foot. Okay, that's enough about that. So we're just going to left click on our smoothed feature line here. And then in our edit geometry palette, uh, right up here, this command is called stepped offset. Um, so I'm going to choose this one, stepped offset. Sorry, I have to select the line first. Select the line, then choose stepped offset. And it wants to know what's the offset distance. Since this line represents the back of curb, our first one, the offset distance is 0.5. Remember, we can't use inches here. We have to use decimal feet. So I say 0.5. And it wants to know which way. Do I offset this way or toward the center of the street? And the answer is I have to pick uh, toward the center of the street. So there I've given it that information. Now it wants to know what's the elevation difference. And if this line is going to represent the flow line of the curb, my elevation difference will be uh, negative 0.5. That's going to drop it down. It's now going to represent the flow line elevation for the curb. So I type in negative 0.5, and notice it has now created uh, a feature line that represents the flow line of the curb. Um, so I'm going to just end out of the command there, maybe hit escape once or twice, and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to I'm going to click on that same line, the back of curb line, and I'm going to choose. It's already been smoothed. I'm going to choose off step to offset. Uh, again, it wants to know what's the offset distance. This time it's going to be 2.5 because I want this line to represent the flange line of the curb. And then the, uh, uh, the side to offset is, again, it's toward the center of the road. And the elevation difference this time, remember, we're coming down half a foot to get to the flow line, and then we're going up. 12 hundredths so my off so my elevation difference is negative 0.38 and I hit enter and so now I have three lines that represent my curb section this is the back of curb this is the flow line that we just created and this is the flange line and they have the correct elevations um, they're dropped down in both cases. So I'd like you to do that with all of your curb lines. Uh, you may not want to, I, I don't think these islands are really the same. Work on just the outside curb lines for now. Don't worry about the islands. Okay, thank you.